All right, hat emergencies. Let's talk about that. What are the most commonly asked questions in my uh, comment section? People are like, uh, Kev, I got a little problem here. I'm in a predicament. Um, what do you think I should do? What are, what are they? What are those uh, common predicaments? Okay, so that doesn't really roll off the tongue. So we'll call it something else. This show will be uh, most commonly asked questions or maybe, I'm thinking hat emergencies, or maybe both, I don't know. Oh wow, what a noisy cable, look at that. I figured I'd try this cheap cable out. It's actually a little noisy, so hey. Cheap cables, gotta love them. Okay, so here's the deal. Number one thing is always, um, I'm a 58, and there was a hat in a 57. It's the only one left. Can you stretch it for me? Okay, everybody knows the answer to that because I, I try to overstate this quite a lot. Um, stretching doesn't really work. The only way you can stretch is within a size. So if um, you're between sizes a little bit, that'll work. For instance, there's 57 and 58. Um, you try the 58 on and it just looks just so big, it looks oversized. The crown looks wide, high, everything about it just looks too big, like a, like a suit that's a size too large for you or something. You put on the right size and it's, it's pretty good except it's hitting you here in the front. You got a little oval thing going on. Okay, that you can do, okay, because you're so far away from the bigger one. In most cases, you get the bigger one because you just pat it down, okay? And you're fine. And it's safe to have a tiny bit of extra room. Chances are you don't fit dead on a hat. Most people don't. Um, some brands are very erratic with their sizing, like Stetson. A lot of Stetsons fit accurately. Um, you could use them as like a, a litmus to, to measure people and stuff. But um, some Stetsons fit really big. Some of them are large, other ones are very large, um, like comically large. Now, um, it's it's a kind of a, you know, it's a drag when you're ordering mail order and stuff. I understand that. Um, from a salesman's point of view, I gotta say, I, I almost kind of liked it um, because what would happen is, you know, Guys are always between sizes, and it's usually up to you to try to convince them, look, you're between sizes, let's go for the bigger one, pat it down slightly, you'll be good, you'll be out the door. In fact, it's a good way to buy the hat, you know? Um, you might need to get that room back one day. If the sweatband dries out, if your haircut is bigger for any reason, you know, your head swells when you're hot, if you need extra room, you can get it back now. Um, but if you buy a hat too small, you're just screwed. It hurts, it doesn't stretch easily, uh, it bothers you, it doesn't sit right, and you get a line here, which is very unsightly. And the whole idea of getting a hat like this is to look cool. I mean, otherwise you could just put a ski hat on or something and just keep warm and call it a day for five bucks, you know? The thing is, we're all between sizes. It happens a lot. When I get a Stetson and the guy's like, uh, no, nah, it doesn't really fit me well. Hold on. Give me a second. All right, I expect it to happen, it happens a lot. So what I do is I go in the back room and I know I have to find another 58 to fit him, but I wanna find a 58 that looks big, you know, cause the 58 is a little too small for him, the 59 is huge. What do we do? We look for a 58 that's a little oversized. So it's actually working for us, you know, the fact that they're a little erratic. So I'll go and I'll, I'll open two of them. Uh, I'll try to find a big one, I'll open another one big one. Okay, these three, this one is definitely the big one. Um, sometimes if it's my size, I'll even try it on, you know, because I know what my size is and I can go by feel really accurately if you could try one on, you know. But um, 
it works sometimes. I mean, that's how I think about it. A good salesman will make that work for them. They'll say, okay, you know what? I've got three 58s upstairs. Let's see how all three of them fit. You bring them down, one of them fits in like big, one of them's tight, and one's right on the money, like Goldilocks. So, you know, it can work to your advantage, to your advantage because a lot of people are between sizes. Um, it can also not work to you. I, you know, I understand that, you know. Like, uh, you're a size 60, we have a 60, you try it on and it's huge. You know, like, oh man, you know, what's, good? what's up? Um, they do, it happens. I'm not gonna say it happens with every hat, but they're a little bit erratic with some sizing. And it's not every single hat, but, um, you know, certain fedoras you're gonna see, eh, I mean, it's a lot of them, okay? It's a lot of them, but it's not like every single hat within that batch, let's put it that way. So, um, you know, sometimes you get lucky and the hat's like dead on. Other times they're a little bit big. Um, tight, I don't see a lot of them running tight, but mostly, you know, a little large or just dead on. In fact, I generally use Stetsons to measure people because it's a very accurate brand. Um, Stetson, Akubra, they run really accurately um, for the most part, you know. Accurately, like, you know, when you find the right ones and then a few of them run a little large, so it's hard to explain, but yeah. Um, that's a big thing. I just bought a hat, Kevin, it's a little small, can I stretch it? Mm. If you stretch it, it should be a thing you already own and you've got no other choices, you know? That's all you can do. Um, but if you're planning on buying it to stretch, don't. Um, you just never want that. Um, if you've ever had it, it's just the worst. It's like wearing really tight shoes all day, and you know, you get like blisters, and you're in a bad mood, and you can't walk, and you know, and then it, it just stays with you for a while, you get this red line. Like, like even when you take it off, you're eating dinner for an hour, it's still there, the red line. It's just very, it's bad. Um, if you buy your hat a little big, you can bring it down. Uh, I'm gonna say, even if it's one size up, you can do it. The only thing is, if a size, it, if your size is 58 and you're going up a whole size to 59 or something, what happens then is um, the hat itself becomes large. It becomes baggier. So everything is scaled up. Um, it's like wearing a size large t-shirt when you're really a medium. You get a baggier look, which gives you a kind of a more relaxed kind of thing. You know, see like my hat's oversized. It looks kind of like cool and like, you know, it's got like this young kind of jazzy thing going on, hip hop -y or whatever. But when you buy it a little tighter, you know, it's riding higher and stuff. It, it can look a little bit more conservative. Um, I think buying a hat large will look good but only, you know, you've only got so much leeway. You can't keep buying it and buying it like larger, larger, larger. You're gonna start to, you know, especially if you like the tailored look. If you're a kind of a guy who's not into this kind of funky hip hop kind of oversized thing, I understand that. Most people are not. They want a classic fit. You know, they're a classic guy. So um, going up an entire size will do that sometimes. It'll make your head appear a little different, bigger, kind of funkier, you know, oversized, like an oversized sweatshirt or something. So when you buy a tailored and it's sitting in the right place and the hat is tailored, you know, to your face and cut just right, it looks perfect, you know? Um, so yeah, you can go big, it's safe, but just a little, you can't go crazy big. Um, I always say round up to the, to the higher size, you know? If you're like 57 and a quarter, just go go to 58. You'll generally be cool, you know? Um, you don't have to add on an extra size generally, but um, if you do add on a size, you can pad it, but it's not always gonna look tailored and stuff. You might have a slightly funkier thing going on. Now, um, that's, that's where it gets a little tough because sometimes, the bigger size is gonna look wrong. It looks too baggy, it looks funkier, and you know you can tighten it up and get it to fit you. But it's the tighter one that's giving you that nice tailored look. It's the tighter one you want. Cause the bigger one just looks sloppy or it just looks, you know, 
like Kev's hat, it looks too baggy and too casual looking. So you're a more tailored GQ magazine kind of guy, you know, you want your hat to sit, you know, properly the way John B. Stetson or whoever designed it. I can understand that a hundred thousand percent. Um, but what happens when your actual size is a little tight and the neck size above is just really big and you, it just doesn't look right. Then you got to stretch, then you have to stretch. But that's a small stretch. Um, it's almost like just ovaling something out. Um, there's no way that something could be really, really comically horribly big and then the size below that is too tight. You know, that's just too much of a gap. Um, so what I say is yes, that's when you do want to stretch. The bigger one looks too big, you don't like the looks, and even if you can get it tightened up, you just don't like that oversized thing. Um, yeah, you can stretch. Um, what I recommend is stretching at the hat shop using a full-size stretcher. The big steel ones like you see in the JJ videos when I'm at JJ's, the one that's on the steam table, it's like a big cylinder that kind of opens up like a reverse vise. And you use that to stretch the entire crown. So in other words, it goes from here all the way up. So you're stretching the whole crown. When you use a hat jack, you're just stretching this little part. So it's like, this is good. And then out there it gets stretched. Yeah, now out there it gets stretched. So it's like, yeah, you're doing this little stretch, but it's not right. Um, stretches work within very small increments. Um, definitely not a whole size, definitely not two, not three. Um, a quarter of a size, a third of a size maybe. And you could get away with it. Um, the thing about stretching is, if you want to stretch it 20%, you have to really do it about 60, 70, 80%, and most of it will just come back. So you're left with almost nothing. So you gotta really stretch it to the maximum. People ask me, they say, don't you wanna know how much I want it stretched? It's like, nah, nah. You stretch as much as you can because after it contracts, you'll be lucky to get like 5% out of that, you know? And I'm an aggressive stretcher. I do it really aggressively to the point where the band on the side looks like it's about to pop. You know, like this, the stitches get so stretched out that, you know, the guy's like, it's gonna pop, it's gonna pop. Nah, I want to go further, further. And um, I do those really aggressive stretches. And even after that, where it looks like it should, you know, you put it on and it feels like four or five sizes too big, it comes back. And you're left with either nothing or like 2% or 5% stretch if you're lucky. So it's hard to do. Um, the reality of it is what you need to do is cut that little reed in the back. There's a little, uh, you know, inside of this part of the sweatband, there's a little piece of nylon, you cut it, and then you could start doing a little bit more stretching. But yeah, in reality, stretching is for very small, small things. And I recommend not doing it at all. Um, if you have to do other things, don't stretch the whole hat. Um, you know, cut the reed, cut the, the seam here. If you have to stretch it over your knee, stretch it, you know, with your, just like that and cut the reed. Do all those things, but don't put the whole hat on a stretcher or a hat jack, because you're gonna see so many side effects of that. It's like, you have to spend so much energy getting rid of damage from the stretch that it's, you know, it takes a lot of skill to just do all that. And then when you're done, you're left with almost nothing. It's like a one, two percent stretch anyway. So you just messed up your new hat. Sometimes it's easier to do like, you know, radical stuff, like just taking out the sweatband if nothing else works. Um, I don't really like to do that, but I'd rather do that and still have a fresh hat than stretch. I just don't do that. So there are even instances where I keep half a sweatband inside where it gives you a little bit of body in the front it keeps the brim breaking really well and um, and loosens up the hat like a whole size, size and a half. I've done that before too. Here's, here's an example. I mean, that's pretty radical, you know? It's a half a sweatband in there. Kazam. Yeah. Um, let's get back to those customer uh, 
I'm going to turn this just to analyze this cable. Okay. Customer issues. Um, how about padding a hat? How much can I pad down a hat? Well, padding a hat is a little bit easier. You can do a lot, um, but there's kind of an arc to it. The idea is to pad the hat as much as you can without it being lumpy. Um, you can buy those products from JJ's website, the uh, disposable cotton sweatbands. They're five bucks, or you could get three eighths inch wide uh, poly foam uh, weather seal, just like uh, weather stripping. Just foam on a big tape that's you know got an adhesive backing. You make like a maybe a six inch piece. Put this up in the back. You can put it behind your head under the leather. Okay, either on the leather or on the felt. They fold back to the same place. So what I generally do is I put it on the felt. It doesn't really matter. You could do it either place. Um, sometimes when you put it on leather, it could take some leather off if you remove it, but you probably will never remove it anyway. It's just not going to happen. So, uh, yeah, that's up to you where, where you want to put it. A lot of people do it without the sticky. Um, it doesn't work as well. It seems to move around a lot. Uh, what I could recommend is using half the sticky, you know, just take the sticker off in certain parts and little strips and that way you could probably remove it clean at one point if you ever need to, but I just put the sticky because you'll never take it out. I've never had the need to. But anyway, you pat it in the back, six inch piece, then if you need more, you add a couple of inches to one side, a couple of inches to the other side and extend it, extend it, okay? When you get to like, you know, maybe the middle point, you could stop and then you can start in the front. Put a six inch piece in front and start working your way back. Um, if you go all the way, you need, still need more, that's a lot. Um, then you're gonna need those cap menu pads and you're gonna put them up on top of the leather. You're gonna go in the back, right over, right in the back, over the leather. This is an extremely big hat though. That's, uh, you know, that's something that I do occasionally, but not that much. Uh, Generally, one pad will do it. Two pads in a very big case. Um, you can tighten up a hat um, a full size. I'm going to say about a full size um, or less. If you got to do more, a size and a half, maybe, but not two. You can't do two. Um, you could do a full size. There's a little arc to it, and uh, the idea is to mess around with a few different things, see how it works. I generally don't mess around with the sides too much. The side has such a big gap here, you see, that it doesn't really do anything anyway. You're just wasting kind of like, the front and back won't lay as nicely. It'll get lumpier trying to go all the way around and usually this has no effect. So I usually do kind of like a horseshoe pad in the front and back, starting in the back because you don't feel it as much in the back. When you have hair, it's just, you don't feel the pad at all. But Sometimes in the front, you could feel it a little bit under the leather. Um, when you do it, it's gonna start off looking a little lumpy underneath the leather, but as you wear it and it mats down, compresses, it'll pack down. So yeah, there's the answer. You can tighten up your hat about a size, uh, maybe a size and a half. That's about it. Um, we discussed the sandpaper thing. Um, if you do spill something on your hat, um, Get it off fast. If it's uh, liquid or something, just get a paper towel and just touch it to it. Try to soak something off. Don't brush it, don't press it in. You don't want it to go in. The idea is to not let it soak in deep to keep it on the surface and that's it. So put something very absorbent like a paper towel, toilet paper, a tissue, anything that's super absorbent. Put it right over it and blot it. Blot like almost like, let's say it's grape juice, like you're trying to get as much purple on the cloth as you can. So you kind of like, you know, you touch it and you try to blot it without pressing the stain into the felt, okay? So it's kind of like, you want the, you want them to make contact so that the, the wine kind of, or whatever it is, seeps into the paper towel, but you don't want to press it in. So keep it kind of, you know, a light touch, and that's it. If it's something solid, like a bird droppings or something, 
generally the best thing to do is to just let that stuff dry. Um, a lot of times trying to mess with it will make it go deeper. You just let that thing dry, you get rid of the big part, and we can sometimes sand that off. So other times it can go pretty deep. I would say they do come off a lot of the time. So sanding is it's an art and uh, it's something you need to practice. You can practice it on old felt or something, you know, it's whatever, you know, take a pencil or a pen, write a line or something, you know, get it off. Um, it's a flat, flat edge. Try to use a sanding block. If you have the disposable type, they're really good because they're spongy. And remember, just do the whole side. Don't do just the spot because you don't want to gouge a little hole that's going to show even more. You want to just kind of get everything light and then kind of fade it, you know, into the distance. So it's like, you know, getting that whole area cleaned. When you see how nice it looks, you're probably gonna to wanna to do the whole rest of the hat. It happens a lot. Just almost like take that top surface of dirt off. This works great with silver belly hats too. Now, if you have a silver belly hat, how to clean it is a little different. There's a white powder inside of your hat that's used to clean the hat. So if you get a stain on it, you just take a brush and don't use the same brush for your black and dark hats because it's gonna get white powder on it now. You take the brush and you just brush that powder and you kind of distribute it all over the hat, covering up all the stains and stuff. Now what happens is the powder gets sealed inside of a silver belly hat just from like the smog in the city, the humidity. It's actually smog and it is stuff like that. It just seals it in. And what happens is you have, you have to release it because it's not there. There's a little film covering it. So you take some very nice, fine or you know extra fine sandpaper and you get the top of it very lightly you know just kind of like feather it across the top of the entire hat mm -hmm. feather it across nothing that's gonna like scratch it just something nice to break that initial seal just think there's an invisible kind of a thin teflon kind of coating on there and you're just taking it off once you do that the powder is released, and now you could take your brush and start brushing it counterclockwise, and you're gonna see it getting all over the powder bristles. It's not white powder, it's almost like a salmon color. It's like white mixed with like a very light salmon-y hue, you know? So it's almost like one of those off-white colors when you look at it. But um, if you put it next to a real stark white piece of bleached paper, you could see it's not white. It has that little kind of an orangey pink color like a salmon um, you need that stuff the powder is really good for that so just scratch it you know remember don't get something that's gonna scratch it like rough sandpaper use something light and once you release that powder okay then you start brushing and then just brush 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 go counterclockwise use a brim brush if you have to sometimes I'll, I'll hold it right over here by the leather and I'll just brush you know Rim, do the crown, or you do the walking method, you could walk, or you could do the throwing method. You just keep your thumb here curled over so that when you, you're throwing it and spinning it, you can't lose it. You know, you, you have a little kind of a, a claw in there. So just keep going counterclockwise and brushing that powder in there, the silver belly powder. And as you brush it in and brush it around, the hat's gonna start looking brand new again. You're gonna cover all those little scars and dirt things and everything will just get nice and smooth. And uh, that's about it, I guess. Um, it's a good hack though. A lot of people don't know that about Silver Belly. Silver Belly is the only color that has that powder in it. It's not all hats, it's Silver Belly Westerns. So you should have like a Silver Belly like dress out like an Asher or a Stratoliner, it's, it's not the same. Only like, you know, the open roads, the ranchers, those things, they have the powder, okay? So if you have an open road silver belly, go nuts. If you have a Stratoliner, an Asher, anything else that's silver belly, like a dress hat, fedora, don't do it, it's not gonna work. Um, I've done it to uh, the Royal Flush, the Gambler, 
I have an in silver belly, the open rows uh, of all ages, but it has to be silver belly, not fawn or any other light color. Only silver belly. That's the only color western that has the powder in it. Um, I always showed that a long time ago. That's why hat shops have two different colored brushes. They have a set of black brushes and a set of white brushes. The white ones are for those. Um, I guess that's it. Yeah, I'm going to keep it right there. So remember, Silver Belly Westerns only, ranchers, royal flushes, open roads, all that kind of stuff, uh, Pawnees, whatever you have in a real Silver Belly Western will probably have the powder on it. Um, you know how you do a test? You do it on the underside of the brim, do a little scratching, okay? Um, you, could, you could put a brush on it and flick the bristles of the brush, flick it, flick the brush, and see if smoke, you know, if you get that dust cloud. Anyway, let's see what we can do here. Kevin from Hats and Guitars. Got my new Ash Thorpe. They just sent me. And uh, I'm ready to talk about hat emergencies today. Um, hat emergencies, let's talk about it. Okay, if you spill something on your hat, um, most likely, you know, you're not going to get it out. Um, if it's something on the surface, like let's say, I don't know, dirty hands or something like that, you know, dirt, uh, oily hands, or just something that's, you know, and you kind of smudge something on the top. If it's like the top layer of felt, you can sand off a layer of felt uh, neatly. Underneath there is just more felt. Um, there isn't like a special finish that you're gonna take off. It's not gonna look weird. But it's all in the technique. It's like, um, you don't want to have like a stain here and then sand it off. And now you've got basically a dirty hat with a clean spot and a hole. So it's just as bad as like, as having the stain, right? Okay. So what you got to do is you kind of have to sand the whole side. Okay. You want to side, almost do the whole side of the hat and increase increase your pressure when you get to that spot. So in other words, when you get to there, you're going a little bit more. Okay, but it's it's a very feathery kind of a, uh, a light, light touch. It's all about the technique. Um, you want to keep it as flat and kind of cover as much surface as possible. What I generally do is I have these sanding block things. They make these uh, disposable sanding blocks. They're kind of like a, a rectangle about, you know, like so big, almost like a bar of soap or something. Uh, the ones I get are like a dark pink, sort of like a red sandpaper or like a light red sandpaper. One side is a little nubby, it's got like bumps on it, and the other side is just flat sandpaper. Um, almost look like one of those sponge things that you could buy like to, you know, wash your dishes, but it's uh, sandpaper and you get them at the hardware store, kind of like a little disposable um, sanding block that comes on a piece of foam, okay? So what you're doing is you're getting this flat surface, but you're also getting the foam, so you're getting this like little shock absorb kind of. It it's really, really works well. So, but what you wanna do is get that big area very lightly, feather it, you know? Almost like you're tickling it almost, you know, like, if you try to touch just like the hairs on your arm and not your arm, something like that, and then just start increasing more pressure by very small gradients, getting a little bit harder as you go on. It's, it's somewhere in there when you just start touching. You just want a little pressure, okay? So you're, you're gonna have to kind of sand the whole side in a way, okay? because if you stand in one area, you might wind up with a clean spot and you might just wind up with a spot that looks different. So essentially what I like to do is I sand the whole thing. Um, the best thing to do is to find an inconspicuous spot. Find a spot like under the brim or someplace where people just don't look like maybe under the brim by, you know. See if you could find something there to clean, you know, just anything and, and do a little test. Test the hat out, see how it's responding. Um, obviously it's better if you could practice this, you know, but um, you wanna go really light and, um, you know, don't be afraid to sand it. You gotta take off a layer of felt, but you want it to be very thin. 
um, what kind of sandpaper to use. You don't want to use the really, I don't know the number because we use all sorts of stuff. I have like a little assortment, but uh, it's anywhere from like fine to medium. I'm not going to say extra fine, not that stuff that feels like you can't even tell if it's sandpaper, not that stuff. But um, just some kind of fine sandpaper, somewhere like an emery board, you know, like those little emery boards you buy, the wooden ones. Anything like that is fine, a little bit finer, a little bit rougher in that area. Get it, uh, you know, even if you have a tiny piece of paper, a little square, that's fine. Um, get the technique down very, very lightly. Rub away your stain, rub away some felt. Okay. Get it going, but don't make a hole in it. You don't want to start grinding a little hole. You want to do almost the whole side. Okay, there you go. So, stain removal is not going to work when that stuff goes deep. Because if it's staying down deep, when you get past that top side, it's still down there, you know? The idea is to get down to the clean felt. So if it's something that looks like it's just on the top, you can test it, see if it's coming out, you know? Um, sometimes you can make it worse. So, you know, you have to make that dis like that decision, you're going to do it or not. You want to make sure that it's, you know, it's a good thing to do. That's why I like to test also. Um, Sometimes it's not really going to work because the thing is just too deep and you just have to give up or accept it. Uh, in most cases, if you have a stain here, you know, anywhere in this area or going around or even higher, so let's say in this area where my fingers are, the fix is really simple. You just get a wider band. You have a band to cover the stain and boom, you're done. That's the obvious fix. Um, other places, if you have something in this area here, um, the fix for me is, like let's say you have some dirt there, okay? Right there is a big stain, like a burn or something. You lower the crown, okay, into a teardrop, okay? And what you're doing is you're hiding the stain inside the shadows of the teardrop. It's in here now, against that wall, going that way. So it's in here on the wall. No one will ever see that. So you just hit it in the shadows with a reshape. Okay, so like a good 50 to 70% of the time you can solve this problem without the sandpaper by just covering it up, you know, with a wider band or doing a little teardrop action and getting it just in the shadows, you know. It's kind of like you bring that center up like that, right? And it's in the shadow part. So in other words, it, you know, it's hidden. No one will see it, especially when it's up that high. You know? Okay, so changing the crown shape, changing the band will take care of a lot of it, but sometimes it won't take care of it all. So um, if you can get the stain out, try. Um, it's also good for general cleaning, but uh, you know, I had a hat that I wore for like maybe, I don't know, seven, eight years straight. I loved it so much. And I used to do that. I would sandpaper it clean every once in a while because it was like a, it's a beautiful lavender color. And I, it would fade, it would get dingy. And then one day I left it out and they were doing construction in the next room, but there was a hole like right at the top. The ceiling didn't go all the way to the top. There was like a six inch gap. And all the sawdust went into the room where I stored my hats. And then the next day the, um, the lavender hat was all kind of dingy grayish uh, beige from the sawdust that kind of stuck to it in a weird way, you know, from like a, a moist, humid summer night or whatever. And um, I had to sandpaper it again. So what happened is I sanded a, a, a threadbare spot, like right over here. There's a spot that it became a little through, like a went like almost through. But I sanded this bad boy like 20 times, you know. I'm saying don't do it that many times. If you're gonna clean a hat with that technique, do it once, do it twice, and give up. You, you can't keep doing it. Um, I did. I kept doing it. But um, I had a fix for that too. I just took the little ribbon off on the inside of the hat. I took that off and uh, I unpinched this. Got the pinches gone. I pinched the back and I just flipped it around. I did one of these. You know, I flipped the hat, changed it, and then that way I had the stain in the back now. Everything looked okay. I changed the wind cord, I changed the. Um, the little bow on the inside, the little white bow, um, and it looks okay, but uh, yeah.
to clean your hat with sandpaper a thousand times. Do it once, do it twice. Save that technique for, um, I don't know, you know, a once every few years cleaning and don't, don't keep going up on it. Okay, here's another thing, another hat emergency. Your hat is too small and nothing is stretching it. Um, you really like the hat. There's no way to wear it, it's just way too small. What can I do? Stretching it is going to make the outside of the hat, the visual aspect of it, look horrible. Especially if it's a very big or an intense stretch going very far. Um, it also doesn't actually stretch the hat because the material is not really elastic, okay? The um, little bit, to some extent, the leather. But the felt, what you're doing is you're just redistributing it. So when you make this part here really big, the hole for the head, if that hole gets wider, wider, wider something's getting smaller. What happens is the brim is getting smaller, 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 and the crown is getting lower, lower, lower. So you wind up with this hat that's just like, yeah, the inside fits now, but like the rest of it just looks so unrecognizable. It's, it's like, uh, thanks. You know, you're just so disappointed. So in order to make the impossible happen, you know, you have to sort of redistribute the felt in a way that's just so it doesn't work. Stretching works only for very, very small stretches between one size. You can do a half size from 55.5 to 56. You can go 56 and a half to 57. Um, that's a big stretch though. Trying to do a whole size, it's going to be, you know, so filled with side effects that it's not even going to be worth doing. But anyway, let's see what we can do here.